call the City of Apache Junction Council meeting to order. The invocation will be led by Councilmember Waldron and the pledge by Councilmember Struble. Heavenly Father, we ask for your guidance as we do the work of the Council and make decisions that affect the citizens of Apache Junction, that these decisions are deemed what's best for our city. We ask that you provide comfort and healing to the family of Tom Colenborn as they mourn his passing and celebrate his life. Apache Junction has lost a true friend in his passing. Be with our first responders, military, and their families as they protect us and return home safely. In the Lord's name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mayor Surdy. Here. Vice Mayor Wilson. I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> Councilmember Barker, you're on a Councilmember Barker. I uh, will not be participating this evening. Councilmember Evans. Here. Councilmember Rizzi. Present. Councilmember Struble. Here. Councilmember Waldron. Here. Six members present. You have a quorum, Your Honor. Do we have a motion on the consent agenda? Your Honor? Yes. I move that the consent agenda be accepted as presented and that resolution number 1829, the resolution of the Mayor and City Council of the City of Apache Junction, Arizona, approving and adopting the updated Pinell County Community Wildfire Protection Plan be approved. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Rizzi? Yes. Vice Mayor Wilson? Yes. Councilmember Struble? Yes. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Councilmember Waldron? Yes. Mayor Surdy? Yes. Unanimous, Your Honor. I have a couple of proclamations. The first one is on Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Whereas anyone can be a victim of domestic violence, regardless of age, sex, ethnicity, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, or religious religion, and whereas domestic violence in any community may exist as a hidden, silent, and often unrecognized reality that is often not reported to authorities, and whereas there is a need to challenge the assumptions made about domestic violence, become proactive in preventing domestic violence, and hold offenders accountable, and whereas the city of Apache Junction, the Apache Junction Police Department, Community Alliance Against Family Abuse, and other agencies, organizations, and state coalitions across Arizona and the nation are committed to preventing domestic violence by promoting prevention awareness campaigns, educating the community, and advocating for victims' rights. Now, therefore, I, Jeff Surdy, Mayor of the City of Apache Junction, Arizona, do hereby proclaim October 2018 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in Apache Junction and urge all citizens to work together to prevent domestic violence. I don't think we have anyone here from CAFA tonight, so if the chief would come. CAFA board, right there? Yeah. Okay, we have a CAFA board member, I'm sorry. Go back and sit down. Yeah. Thank you, chief. And if you'll notice, most everyone on council tonight is wearing purple. So there's certain times, and I think next meeting we'll probably wear purple again. And uh, you'll also see that the focal point at night is now lit up in purple all this month. You'll see the silhouettes out, uh, out in the front that, uh, and, uh, and we're asking everyone citywide to wear purple in recognition of Domestic Violence Awareness Day. So uh, that's why we're all wearing purple. So one other uh, proclamation it's for Small Business Saturday. And this is very small type, so bear with me. Whereas the city of Apache Junction, Arizona, celebrates our local small business and the contributions they make to our local economy and community, According to the United States Small Business Administration, there are currently 30.2 million small businesses in the United States. 
They represent 99.7% of all business with employees in the United States are responsible for 65.9% of net new jobs created from 2000 to 2017. And whereas small businesses employ 47.5% of the employees in the private sector in the United States. And whereas 90% of all consumers in the United States say Small Business Saturday has, has, a, has had a positive impact on their community. And whereas 89% of consumers who are aware of Small Business Saturday said the, said the day encourages them to shop small all year long. And whereas 73% of consumers who reportedly shop small and independently owned retailers and restaurants on Small Business Saturday did so with friends and family. And whereas the most reported reason for consumers aware of the day to shop and dine at small independently owned businesses was to support their community, 64%. And whereas the city of Apache Junction, Arizona supports our local businesses that create jobs, boost our local economy and preserve our communities. And whereas advocacy groups, as well as public and private organizations across the country have endorsed, endorsed the Saturday after Thanksgiving as Small Business Saturday. Now therefore I, Jeff Surdy, Mayor of the City of Apache Junction, Arizona, do hereby proclaim November 24th, 2018, as Small Business Saturday, and urge the residents of our community and, and communities across the country to, to support small businesses and merchants on Small Business Saturday and throughout the year. And I think we have the chamber president and director here to accept this. Any announcements or current events? Jeff? Yep, I got a couple. Um, I'd just like to announce that the Kiwanis Club of Apache Junction will be holding the second annual um, AJ Kids Idol on January 27th out at Barleen's. And so if you know of any children that either live in or attend the any school in Apache Junction in Gold Canyon that um, are the ages kindergarten through uh, senior in high school, we're going to be holding auditions in October and, D and uh, November. And so you can go to the uh, Facebook page, AJ Kids Idol, and um, register or contact me or Braden. And um, then the other thing is we're going to start out a new program starting November 2nd. It's going to be the <coughs> AJ Open Mic Night, and it's going to be held every two weeks at uh, Horizon Health and Wellness Earth Heart Park. I got to get all those words in there. Um, and it's going to be open to anybody who's older than 14 that is uh, musically inclined and would like to go out and show off what they can do either vocally or, or instrumentally. And it's an outdoor venue and it's going to be a great place to play um, and sing. And we hope that uh, the uh, community comes out and supports the uh, people that um, would like to show off their talents. Um, once again at Earth Heart Park, this Saturday is the first farmer's market of the season. It'll go to a, um, from about 9 o'clock to noon. The first one is always a little bit less attended simply because it's the first one and we don't have a lot of visitors back yet. Um, last week I attended a MAG human service meeting and because it's all of the valley, it, it's interesting to find what different people are doing. And one of the things that involved, there was actually two things that involved children. And one is Tempe District, Unified School District, is using what's called the Barrows Brain Book. And it's for all of their athletes. And the athletes, the coaches, and uh, the parents all have to read this book and sign off because it explains things about concussions 
and hurting. It, you know, I think as kids, we were all told, oh, just play through the pain. It's okay. Don't, don't worry about it. I was <coughs> never told that. I was always told, don't get hurt. So when I did, I just never told anybody because then you can't go play again. So, um, but as an awareness for athletes of what things can actually do to, from brain injuries, and they've also included a portion on opioids to explain to parents what an opioid really is and how it affects the brain. Um, they also have sort of a D.A.R.E. program, but updated, called RX360. So it's kind of a more modern version of what our D.A.R.E. program. So I'm going to be looking into that just to see if what we can tweak or do differently or add to our program. Um, and the third thing they were doing, which I thought was really interesting and weird, is the city of Tempe is testing, they're doing wastewater testing to find hot spots on opioid use. So between the GSI maps and this wastewater testing, they've been able to identify hot spot uses of opioids, which sounds like incredible, just so I don't have to do it. But Anything like that that we can bring to our community and see what we can do to help out. And the last thing was the ANGELS program, which works with the police department and anybody who is addicted to anything. Um, there's a system put in place where you can show up at the police station, you're not arrested, and you're, if you want treatment, you're immediately taken to a facility, which is a great way to do it. So, very interesting meeting. Dave or Krista? Yeah. <clears throat> I, I want to come back to the, the loss that we suffered this week with uh, Tom Collinborn. I would say that probably 80% of the people in this room have some recollection and he touched our lives by any time you met him and uh, just very irreplaceable and uh, he was a, a, a legend bigger than life and uh, so I look forward to still reading his columns. And uh, so, you know, just, just wanted to bring that up one more time. So uh, city manager's report. Thank you, Your Honor. Good evening, yes, Mayor. Uh, our great historian is a huge loss to all of us. And I remember being able to go out with him to the 100-year anniversary of the, of the Roosevelt um, Lake mm -hmm. Bridge, and, and with Vice Mayor, we were able to go together, and he it will be sorely missed in our community. Council Member Evans, yes, the technology's coming. Parts per million is what we used to test in wastewater. The ability to do parts per billion mm -hmm. and being able to measure what exactly is in there is an interesting concept. We're not quite there yet, but we <laughs> thank you for bringing those innovations and ideas to us, and we'll certainly look at all ideas and <coughs> methods to help our community. Tonight, Mayor, members of the council, I'm very pleased to announce that we have found Roger Hacker's replacement. He started on Monday and would encourage you to come in and meet him. His name is Fox Young, and his direct uh, initial um, workload will include overseeing the Community Development Corporation and the Friends of Apache Junction and that or those organizations as well as the support to grants and revenue development division. You will have an opportunity to meet him also, if you can't, uh, come see him on October 17th when we have our um, donor night over at the Parks and Recreation Conference Room when we do that. And that's coming up, and we'll make sure that you get that invitation. So Roger's temporary time is finished? So. Starting to be done, yeah. Okay. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we reach out to him here and there and see him around, but yes, that is correct. Uh, Fox has been most recently with the Kentucky Department of Transportation, worked in their Parks and Recreation program, been a park uh, manager and park service supervisor. He has a BA in philosophy and anthropology, and he has a master's of business administration from Western Governors University. He says that he's very grateful for this opportunity and looks forward to serving this community and being an integral part of it. He says he's also very grateful to have never, uh, well never, let's see, I am also great, uh, thankful I never have to shovel 
or drive in snow again. <laughs> so we'll have a chance to meet him and I wanted you to know that he's on board. In addition, last week, um, Liz Riley, our HR director, and I got a chance to participate in a health insurance uh, conference. As you may be aware, the second highest cost to the organization after salaries is our um, health insurance. And we work very hard to encourage our employees to be health conscious be, and have a wellness program that's inv invigorating. We did find out that uh, and through a session about uh, e-cigarettes and vaping and that this generation of youth will be the beta test case of what really is going on with these. And that we have some information I'm gonna pass on to you from a vendor that, that does help um, with that. But I noticed recently our high school, or our, I can't remember if it came through the school district, that they're very concerned about that. And so um, I think it's something that we need to be aware of as well and be able to be able to understand a little bit more. So um, I will pass this along and, uh, and that concludes my report tonight. Thank you. Consideration of annual appointments and reappointments to Board of Adjustment, Library Board, Parks and Recreation, Planning and Zoning Commission. And I want to uh, kind of make, ask a question or statement and get some opinion. With the, elect, with the election of Council Member Elect Schroeder, who will be stepping down, there's going to be another position in just a very short time and we already had pretty extensive interviews last night. Is it really necessary to call everybody back and interview them again, or can, would the council like to just keep them fresh in our mind, and when we do need to pick someone, can we pick them from this pool of whoever is left? Is that appropriate, and what does everybody think of that? I have, I have a question, actually. Um, was, were you gonna answer the mayor? Is that a question for me, mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor? Yes, I mean, oh, okay. uh, I think it would save a lot of time and, uh, I thought and the citizens' asking. time of having to all come back here and re-interview since we interviewed in October and it's gonna be November, December, just 60 days from now, do we need to make them all come back? Or I thought you were asking your fellow council members. I, I did, okay. but nobody responded. So. Okay, y yes, you can do that. That's not a problem. I mean, you can't vote on that tonight, but you can bring, when you do bring it back, and if you want to just uh, base it on your memory of the interview that we had last night, that's fine. Okay. So I'm asking council to just keep your memories and your notes tonight so that we can uh, save some time and effort next time. Jeff? Yes. The only thing I'm gonna ask is uh, on my uh, computer, I cannot get the uh, resumes and anything. So definitely would like to see the resumes of the people. Okay, for, for tonight or for the future appointments? For the future appointments. Okay, because I think in two, in two weeks we're gonna be doing another set. We're gonna be doing uh, some, uh, some other boards, so. We'll make sure. We had a couple that, yeah. glitch, yeah. glitches on our computer, so. Yep. Maybe might have to do some hard, hard copies if they don't come out. Okay. So, Kathy, do you wanna introduce this? And yes, you're, you're as you mentioned last night, you held a series of interviews for your board of adjustment, uh, for which you have two positions. Uh, one person wants to be reappointed, but, and there were no new applicants. But you also have library board, which has two positions. Uh, Mr. Graves, who was not here last night, wants to be reappointed, and Mrs. Walters interviewed as a new applicant. Your Parks and Recreation Commission has three positions. Two individuals want to be reappointed and you have two new applicants. And then the Planning and Zoning Commission has two positions. Two individuals want to be reappointed and you have, I think there's nine uh, others seeking uh, appointment. Do we need to make the nominations individually? Each one separately? Well, in the past, when somebody made the sequence, in, in, you know, all at once, other council members didn't like that. So it's it's your preference. The way I structured the motions, somebody could do all of them, or you could do each one individually. But they each take a motion and a second, because this is a motion. It's not like a a nomination process. I would prefer to do them each individually. Yeah. So. 
Okay, I think we're ready for the first motion, which would be on Board of Adjustment. Your Honor. Yes. Um, I would move that we, um, I would like to nominate, I don't have the names here, I apologize, Wal Walker Waldy. Is it Waldy What's Walker? I'm sorry, I don't Walker have the name. Walker Waldy um, for the Board of Adjustment. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Roll call. Vice Mayor Wilson? Yes. Councilmember Struble? Yes. Councilmember Waldron? Yes. Councilmember Rizzi? Yes. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Mayor Surdy? Yes. Unanimous, Your Honor. Do we have another motion for the other position there? Your Honor? Yes. I move that Jesse Gage be reappointed for a term to expire October 31st, 2021. Second. Second. Can we have a second roll call? Councilmember Struble? Yes. Councilmember Rizzi? Yes. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Vice Mayor Wilson? Yes. Councilmember Waldron? Yes. Mayor Surdy? Yes. Unanimous, Your Honor. We have a motion on the first of two library board positions. Your Honor? Yes. I'd like to reappoint Samuel Graves for um, to be reappointed for a term to expire August 31st, 2020. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> October 31st, 2021. Is there a second? I'll second. Have a second. Roll call. Councilmember Waldron? Yes. Vice Mayor Wilson? Yes. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Councilmember Rizzi? Yes. Councilmember Struble? Yes. Mayor Surdy? Yes. Unanimous, Your Honor. Do we have another motion for library board? Your Honor? Yes. I would like um, to appoint our new applicant, Vera Walters, for a term to expire October 31st, 2021. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Rizzi? Yes. <clears throat> Vice Mayor Wilson? Yes. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Councilmember Struble? Yes. Councilmember Waldron? Yes. Mayor Surdy? Yes. <clears throat> Unanimous, Your Honor. Parks and Recreation, do I have a motion on the first of three? Your Honor? Yes. I move that Wayne Standage to be reappointed for a term to expire October 31st, 2021. Second. Second. <laughs> roll, roll call. Vice Mayor Wilson? Yes. <clears throat> Councilmember Struble? Yes. Councilmember Waldron? Yes. Councilmember Rizzi? Yes. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Mayor Surdy? Yes. Unanimous, Your Honor. Do I have another motion for Parks and Recreation? Your Honor? I move that um, Walker Waldy uh, be appointed for a term to expire to the Parks and Recreation Commission for a term to expire October 31st, 2021. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Waldron? No. Vice Mayor Wilson? Yes. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Councilmember Rizzi? Yes. Councilmember Struble? Yes. Mayor Surdy? Yes. Five in favor, one opposed, the motion carries, Your Honor. And we have one more nomination for that board. Um, Your Don't Honor? We? Yes. yes. I move that um, Frank Shanbeck be appointed uh, to the Parks and Rec Commission for a term to expire October 31st, 2021. Second. Okay. Roll call. Councilmember Rizzi? Yes. <clears throat> Councilmember Struble? Yes. Vice Mayor Wilson? Can you tell me who it was again? Frank Schoenbeck. Okay, yes. Okay. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Councilmember Waldron? Yes. Mayor Surdy? Yes. <clears throat> Unanimous, Your Honor. We now have two for planning and zoning. Do we have a motion on the first one? Your Honor. It's Krista. I move that Colleen Shipment be appointed to uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission for a term to expire October 31st, 2021. We have a second. second. I think Chip seconded. We have a roll call. Vice Mayor Wilson? Yes. Councilmember Struble? I have other people I'd like to be on there, so no. Councilmember Waldron? No. Councilmember Rizzi? Yes. Councilmember Evans? No. Mayor Surdy? Yes. Three in favor, three opposed. The motion fails, Your Honor. We have another motion for the first of the 
part of the planning and zoning. Your Honor. Yes. I move that Jim Duncan be appointed for a term to expire October 31st, 2021. We have a second. Second. Roll call. Council Member Waldron. Yes. Vice Mayor Wilson. Again, who was that again? James Duncan. Oh, yes. Council Member Evans. Yes. Council Member Rizzi. No. Council Member Struble. No. Mayor Surdy. No. Three in favor, three opposed. The motion fails, Your Honor. We have another motion for planning and zoning. Your Honor. Yes. I move that, let me get his name here, Robert, I don't want to miss Rauschenbach. Yes. Be appointed for a term to expire October 31st, 2021. We have a second. Second. Roll call. Council Member Rizzi. I think that he would be really good for the board, but I had somebody else in mind, so I'm going to vote no. Vice Mayor Wilson? No. Council Member Struble? Yes. Council Member Evans? Yes. Council Member Waldron? Yes. Mayor Surdy? No. <laughs> three in favor, three opposed. The motion fails, Your Honor. Can I have another motion for Planning and Zoning Commissioner? Well, Your Honor, yes. I would like to reappoint Teresa Nesser for a- Second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down, Chip. <laughs> for a term to expire October 31st, 2021. And Chip already seconded. Roll call. Vice Mayor Wilson? Yes. Council Member Struble? Yes. Council Member Waldron? Yes. Council Member Rizzi? Yes. Council Member Evans? Yes. Mayor Surdy? Yes. Looks like we're, Runner. we got halfway done there. Yep. <laughs> Can I have another uh, motion on the last P and Z? Your Honor. Yes. Um, I move that Shirley Uli um, be appointed to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a term to expire October 31st, 2021. We have a second. Second. Sit, roll call. Council Member Struble? Yes. Council Member Rizzi? Yes. Council Member Evans? Yes. Vice Mayor Wilson? No. Council Member Waldron? Yes. Mayor Surdy? Yes. Five in favor, one opposed. That motion carries, Your Honor. Okay, so that is it. We'll, like I said, in, uh, in the next few months, we'll have to pick one more from that group. But although other people could apply in the meantime, correct? The process usually is when you have a vacancy, it's done by press release, setting a deadline for people to apply. So what you might, we'll keep a, I, I, council was not able to vote on your suggestion this evening. So you may want right. to bring it back for discussion and the vote because without that, we I, would, I think staff is kind of at a loss. As yeah. to also his term, to, his term won't expire until he becomes a council member unless he resigns sooner than that. So you may want to wait until after you get a resignation or until January 15th. Yes. Your but, Honor. If he, but if he resigns, like let's just say December 1st, we, what is the time frame? I'm just hypothetically, what is the time frame? If he, if he resigns December 1st, is there a time frame? Well, then you well, can. If, if what he puts in his letter, if yes, he turns whatever. it in December 1st, effective January 15th. Well, if he did, if I'm, I'm saying if he resigns effective December 1st, what the, what's the time process to appoint somebody to the, is it a, a well, it month? And again, it depends on whether you want to go with this group or re-advertise. Um, it might not, well, it might happen the same night he's it, seated. It could. Also, uh, his term, remember, ends in October of next year. Yeah. So he, they would fill, they would fill, whoever gets it would fill the rest of the term. Just for the nine, uh, 10, nine months or whatever. Correct. Correct. Okay, we got a statement. Yeah, I would just like to thank everybody here tonight that applied. This is one of the most difficult things, and it sounds strange if you say that, but we've gone through periods of 
we have no applicants, and then we go through periods where we have a lot of really great applicants without positions. So it's, please keep applying and keep trying because the city needs all the talent we can find. I just like to reiterate that. And even if the play, the, you know, there's volunteer, there's opportunities to volunteer within the city other than the boards and commissions. And I would appreciate, I would really um, like to extend that out and encourage everybody in this room and, and out there in the TV land or whoever's listening um, to take a look and see what else, what other opportunities there are out there. So I appreciate everybody um, putting in their applications. And it sure would have had a different result if Council Member Barker had been here tonight. So it would have been interesting. Do we have a motion on the next set of uh, meetings? Your Honor. Yes. I move an executive session at 6 p.m. and work session at 7 p.m. be held on Monday, October 15, 2018, in the City Council Conference Room and City Council Chambers located at 300 East Superstition Boulevard, Apache Junction, Arizona, respectively. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Struble? Yes. Councilmember Rizzi? Yes. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Vice Mayor Wilson? I'm still here, yes. <laughs> Councilmember Waldron? Yes. Mayor Surdy? Yes. Unanimous, Your Honor. We have a motion on the next day. Your, Your Honor. Honor? Yes. Go ahead. I move an executive session at 6 p.m. and a work session at 7 p.m. be held on Tuesday, October 16, 2018, in the City Council Conference Room and City Council Chambers, 300 East Superstition Boulevard, Apache Junction, Arizona, respectively. Second. Roll call. Councilmember Waldron? Yes. Vice Mayor Wilson? Yes. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Councilmember Rizzi? Yes. Councilmember Struble? Yes. Mayor Surdy? Yes. Unanimous, Your Honor. This is the time for the public to express requests, communications, comments, and suggestions. Each speaker must have already filled out a request to speak for him and handed it to the city clerk before the end of the city manager's report. All issues shall be presented in a professional manner without personal attacks. Under the open meeting law, the council cannot engage in discussion on the issues presented but may respond to criticism and may direct staff to follow up with the speaker directly and or place this matter on a future agenda for council discussion. There's a three minute time limit for each speaker. I have one and it is Charles Beal. Good evening council. My name is Charles Beal. I live at lot 21 of San Marcos Crossing. If you're not familiar with that development, it's right across from the junior high school. A year ago, in October, Driller Development purchased our common area of San Marcos Crossing Homeowners Association. When they did that, the association quit taking care of the common tracks. They felt that they didn't need to do that because they didn't own the property any, long, any longer. So, Driller speculated on the property. Over the last year, they've sent out two letters to us, threatening, in a threatening manner, uh, threatening lawsuits against the city and against our homeowners association. And I'm here this evening to ask the council to uphold Ken Driller of Driller Development to the same standards that you held John and Mary Gray of Santa Fe Crossings last two weeks ago. And that's really all I'm looking for. Support from the council, you know, to take care of our development. Thank you. Would anybody care to respond? No. We can't respond. I mean. Uh, you can uh, ask me to look into it. Yeah. We, are, we are aware of it, Mr. Beal, thank you. And we appreciate you coming and sharing it. So and, if there's any more info that you can get council on that, we would like to read it in the next whatever time. Yes, absolutely. Okay, with that, we'll conclude the meeting and be adjourned.